My name is James Hayden. I'm the Deputy Chief for the City of Fort Myers Fire Department. Introducing uh, 23 uh, tractor drawn aerial. It's the city's first TDA. We've never had a TDA. Uh, it's on an enforcer chassis. Uh, so this is an, an extended cab. Uh, we upgraded the, to the vinyl flooring to make it easier to clean. It seats uh, four back here, two SCBA seats. Up on the back bulkhead, there's storage up there for all of our electronics to keep all the electronics out of the way. On the chassis itself, we're going to use these compartments as an engineer's compartment on the opposing side uh, for EMS. Coming to the back. <clears throat> Full transverse compartment with a full transverse two-way sliding tool board. We have a small uh, crate mounted calf system that will be installed at the front bulkhead for small uh, nuisance fires and things of that nature. There is no tank or pump on this truck. This will be a true truck company. Another transverse compartment, large uh, pass-through transverse tray that can go out of either side, plus on the other side is a tilting tray as well. We outfitted it with all the rubber rub rails so we could inlay all the, the emergency lighting in here. We inlaid all these. The last transverse compartment will hold our Stokes basket and some of our more uh, um, technical rescue equipment such as a, um, a tripod, struts, things of that nature. This compartment, we're uh, thought process was airbags, airbag storage, plus all your bottles and all your control units. Coming back to the back. Since this is our first TDA uh, and they're pretty much big rolling toolboxes, we don't really have a plan for this compartment as of yet, so we're going to grow into it. We shrunk this piece in in order to make good visibility for the tiller driver, so we were able to accomplish a compartment such as this to, again, miscellaneous. We haven't got a, a true meaning for that compartment yet. So finally on this compartment, um, you'll notice it's got the track uh, backing back here so we can actually mount some of the tiller driver equipment. There'll be enough room for their gear and we'll hang their coat and helmet and all those things up here. So coming into the back of the truck, got our ladder storage, full complement of ladders. Down here, extra bottle storage for SCBA bottles. Have all of our pike poles up top. So the rear of the truck, a, a traditional tiller that we've seen, the, the stairs climbing into the cab are usually forward of the tiller cab. We chose to put them in line with the door and then go ahead and do a, a sliding door. So we've got good, clear, um, and safe access right into the tiller cab. What that allows us to do also is there's a grab rail up top plus this grab rail so the tillerman can actually lean out, hold on to this grab rail for backing up and maneuvering in areas where they can't see real well. This is the other tillerman's uh, compartment. So you have your, your track board back here to mount um, their equipment, their tools, what they need when they get on, uh, on the fire ground. Their gear, boots, and all that can fit here with their coat and helmet. These are your, are your uh, your turning lights make it easier for the tillerman to see at night. Again, same thing on the other side, the, the one slam door so that we could recess this back and have good visibility from the tillerman's point of view. So as a reference point, this, if this were coming all the way out to the end of the box, you would lose a great deal of visibility at the tire. So this, this being cut in actually gives you some of that visibility right over the tire. And this little guy right here is an indicator where the center point of the tire is. So the, tiller, the tillerman knows exactly where the center point of the tire is. One of the things we did too is we, we took a lot of notes and things from other um, departments that have tillers. Uh, you know, we took a lot of, of good information from a lot of different people. One of them was just a simple little addition was this, this arm here to hold the convex mirror in place so when you're driving down the road it doesn't shake and doesn't move and it does work. Large compartment that we haven't got quite figured out what we're going to put in it yet, because like I said before, we're going to we're going to have some uh, urban search and rescue equipment on this truck, but not quite sure how to how to outfit it just yet. Once the truck gets outfitted at our dealer, 
um, we have some shelving and some options that we're going to use in this compartment for various things. And of course we get into our transverse compartments that are all the way through. There'll be power, electric that will be um, installed up in the bulkheads so that we can plug in our chargers, uh, things of that nature for our extrication equipment. Most things are battery powered these days. Got the one tilt out shelf for some of those heavy things and awkward things to get to. Final transverse, like I said, this is also the same thing that we showed on the other side. This tool board will come all the way out so you have access on both sides. Coming to the rear of the tractor, this compartment will house most of our medical equipment. We'll have plug-in stuff here for 12 volt and our cab lift is, uh, controls are there as well. All right, so this is our intake. There's an intake on either side. Because this truck does not have a tank or a pump, we're gonna rely on another pumper to pump water through the aerial waterway. So that's where we'd make that connection uh, with an elbow. Got a, a six KW Harrison hydraulic power generator that powers the tiller cab air conditioner and a couple of receptacles uh, in the trailer. And finally, we've got our, our 360 camera. This is a portion of that. This, this camera will actually let us see exactly where our stabilizers are gonna come out and land uh, once we go to set the truck up. So a couple of the, of the um, additions we did to the end of the aerial, uh, we put the two scabbards, one on either side uh, of the aerial for saws. Um, so there's aerial controls on the top as well uh, for all aerial movement for the, for the firefighter that may be up here and need to position closer. Um, and there's also the, uh, like I said before, the fog nozzle that's on there now that's remote controlled uh, with those controls there and also at the pedestal. So moving back towards the aerial, you'll see that there's uh, two straight ladders as opposed to just the one. So we've got a 10 foot and a 14 foot uh, roof ladder with hooks that gives us easy access on the way up to, uh, to a um, rooftop operation. So another feature uh, we did is, is added these boxes, trying to keep the low profile to store an A-frame ladder, uh, as well as a small uh, other versatile ladder that we can use in you know, different situations. So we can, we can access those two ladders either from uh, the top position of the aerial, or we can access them from the ground. So, so the lighting is fairly standard. Uh, we, like I said before, we took a lot of ideas from a lot of different uh, departments that have had experience with tillers. Um, it was important for us to get high, medium, and low lighting. Got all that stuff taken care of. Um, I'd like to thank our apparatus committee here uh, for all their time and effort that they put into getting all the details and, and keeping our uh, Pierce uh, team rolling, keep our salesmen in check. Um, and uh, we'd like to thank our community. I'd like to thank the fire chief, uh, Tracy McMillian with the city of Fort Myers uh, for our, all the support. Um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened um, without them.